What's popping? What's cracking? What's how's everybody snapping? doing today? It's me, your boy. We're back at it again with the subclass podcast, <laughs> yep. which is such a. I love that name because it's, it just it's just it's growing perfect. On me. It's like subclass podcast. Mm-hmm. We fucking suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's class. There's the thing that's expected of us. You know, the certain mannerisms. <laughs> we're we're far below that. Um, it's it's your boy, um, <laughs> st- stressed out white kid, and skinny, uh, depressed alcoholic, white Cre- kid. We're here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> God, um, we stole that. How are you doing today? Oh my God, dude. Um, that video you like just dropped yeah. it, right? Uh, yeah, it's awesome. Like two hours ago, <laughs> it's Thank you. awesome. I love it. Oh, man. I only got to watch the first half of it in mm. like the In and Out drive through. <laughs> nice, <laughs> but, but uh, but uh, yeah, it was really really funny so far. Good, it's so great. It took a long time to make a yeah. lot of a lot of thought and pain and effort, but it was fun. In it, case you guys it, don't it, know, it, uh, it, we're we're referencing Logan's uh, new um, using your skills, using your skills video. In case mm-hmm. you're watching this in the future or something like that, uh, what like a crazy person would do. Yeah, um, uh, but uh, can they even do that? That's the future. No, it just deletes itself yeah. after a week. <laughs> <laughs> nice, dude. God bless America. God bless you and America. Thank you. God bless every single one of you for the rest of your lives. <laughs> um, no, yeah, the video. Uh, if if people notice while while they're watching it, we're just in different clothes yeah. for like most of the scenes. <laughs> there's we only did like three skits in different clothes. Yeah, well, we had like three different days, and then you had like eight hundred. But like, yeah. I, I I know you had me for three, and I then no, yeah, well, it was, it was two. The, like the main filming day where we did it for like five hours and then and I then we did a second one and then you came to my house and did a third one what was the second one the second one was so there was the first time we did most mm-hmm. of the game show stuff yeah then the second one was like when we drank the beer remember oh. yeah we did we did two oh, it's just all one for you no we uh we scrapped the first one i didn't use any of that footage oh you didn't no yeah you did yeah, yeah, because it though it's the one right where you where you look at me and go a contestant and I'm just like huh you know that part <laughs> oh yeah, yeah you okay did, you, you still that's, use that's it. like all yeah yeah I, I do that bit twice nice yeah it was pretty funny thank you um yeah so go, <laughs> go watch Logan's video it's yeah. hilarious and he put a lot of work into it and it really shows because it's insane yeah so good job it, it starts off a little bit slow but the jokes get really rapid fire at one point because it's like I thought there would be lead up to lead ups to jokes. That there just weren't, so it's like punchline, punchline, punchline. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Um, so what have you been up to? Oh, uh, well, you know, just the Arcane Arcade Patreon, guys. Whoa. Hey, go check it out. Wait, is that that thing that we're on? Yeah, that's the Whoa. thing we're on. Yeah, it's crazy. I've been uploading every freaking episode of everything mm. we've ever done split just, up yeah. into 200 megabyte files because most of them are not 200 megabyte files mm-hmm. so you've got you've got te- sunder episode three um but Which it's actually se- sunder episode long. three part one part two part three in two hour segments on patreon mm. because you know and then the sequel and the special edition and the director's <laughs> cut and the christmas special oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> of, epi- of episode three <laughs> just episode three <laughs> <laughs> episode three christmas special we, wait we do have a christmas special for for the show oh, yeah. oh my we god didn't even make a fucking thumbnail for that no d- d- didn't care no not at all <laughs> it was fun though yeah um so yeah we're gonna have that live it sh- actually is probably up by the time anybody's listening to this mm. so which means i'm gonna have a little stupid y- thing at the beginning which of which means you're gonna keep powering through because you've like only got sunder done and we yeah. have three other games well, they're, they're all shorter they're like, much shorter so Sun- sunder's probably like it's the massive mountain that i had like to do first 60 percent of all the collective footage we have on that channel yeah it's a lot and it's literally just because it's just us playing dna it's just yeah no it's, freaking it's, play. It's, it's a lot more candid i try to like keep certain points tight in test Rect where it's yeah. like the moment there's a lull i have the next thing or but it's insane that there are people that still watch it they're yeah. like hardcore people. Mm-hmm. You guys are awesome. There's Holy that one crap. Dude who did like the full freaking Wikipedia for it. He, yeah, did he, he tried. Did he, oh, yeah. yeah. He, he, it's too I much. I mean, it's huge. It's yeah. huge. I, I wouldn't expect no. that from anyone. That is insane. There were some comments from some newcomers on 
on Tesseract that were like, so uh, what's what's happening in this game? And normally, mm-hmm. with a good game or a good TV show, you could give a brief synopsis. Yeah. Tesseract is too huge to explain, which hinders it for sure. But uh, that... Well, I mean, so is Sunder. It's like, yeah, that's, so that's like fair. each season is like its own story. Mm-hmm. Each se- Like I've already talked about this. Each season of Sunder could be its own campaign. So while I, you know, want you to experience the other parts of the game, you legitimately don't have, you can start on a season and just go from there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there are some people who are just like, oh, I'm starting from the very beginning. I'm like, okay, it's, it's hella different. Yeah. It's like complete, like the story is relatively the same, but the party is, is like 100% different. Yeah. Um, if you look oh, at episode, if you look stuff. at episode one, it's, you know, it's Zephyr, Olivier, uh, Turk, Fee, and Viola. And then in our current game right now, it's Vincent, Curia, uh, 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 Atlantica, Neelix, Klaz, Bellix, Morgan, Aura, and I don't know. I think I'm forgetting someone. That's a it, hefty chunk of names there. Well, Tim's playing two characters. Mm. And You'd stop letting people do that. <laughs> so powerful. Yeah. Because uh, I, I don't. I, yeah, I have to yeah. limit it at some points. Like there, it's, we it's did like tough. a Garyon fight, and there, and uh, Tim was like, "Can I play both?" And I was like, "You need to just pick one." Yeah. Because I didn't plan this encounter for mm-hmm. yeah. eight thousand characters. No. That's... And he was cool with it, so it's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, yeah they're, yeah, they're way different. So I, yeah, if you just start Same. up on a season, it, it's it's okay. Mm-hmm. Same thing with the Salt Marsh Party, but that game moves a lot faster. <laughs> yeah. Everyone is different now. Oh my god! Except for Spencer's character. Oh, that's <laughs> not even out yet. This is this is a pre. This is just letting it's, you guys it's know. It's a bit of a preview. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like they're, Lit, no, they're still with Yaga. I think as of now. Wow. <laughs> yeah. There's um, th- there's a lot of things that can cause a party member to leave other than dying. A lot wanted, of people. Yeah, I wanted to talk about this. Yeah, Sorry, continue, just continue. in general as a topic, because that's kind of what I was leading into. Yes. So yeah, go oh, for it. I'll um, let you start. Sorry, cutting you off. There, no, you're not. But um, no, I had a big old conversation with Colton and and Spencer one night. Cause, just about character swapping. Man, I am. It's it's not pissing me off. It's just annoying me. It's it's really it's really annoying. Um, <laughs> that we change our characters. It's okay. So, oh, okay. Well, hang on, hang on. I'll get it. I'll get into yeah. it. It's a lot. It's because <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm thin to disagree with you. Oh boy. Well, okay. Here's the thing. I really like when people. I'm okay with people wanting to change their characters. Mm-hmm. If there's a legitimate reason as to why they want to do it, then you know it's cool. I, yeah. I let them do it. Still, it's not or like I'm going to say die. you know, <laughs> or if they die or something like that. Um, however, in my in my games recently, at least in the past, um, with with Sunder, mm. with Salt Marsh. Um, and with um, what other games? Most of my, some of my other games. I, I nailed it. I think it's just those two mostly. I nailed it down to like a bunch of characters who who left. Um, oh, you're you basically are doing like statistics for cause and effect. So I'm doing it because I'm. Uh, I should just say I, I I am annoyed and frustrated as to why it's happening so much. Yeah. And I want to find out why. Now, normally I'm okay with it, but it's been happening so frequently that I'm sitting here going, am I doing something oh, yeah. wrong? I, I everybody think... keeps changing their character. It's not just like, oh, I'm going to play somebody different for the next game. It's like every three games, somebody's it, out and they have a new character. Then somebody's out and they have a new character. It didn't used to be like that. No, it didn't. And when we yeah. did Immortals and Ember Warriors and, and all the other games, God, it was like had... everybody played the same character the entire it, time. I didn't. I was th- like, I was bleeding into that, but still, I had two characters for the longest time, like Salas and Chai Lee, they well, were, they but were you, big. But you played Chai Lee the entirety of Immortals. And then in my first campaign with Inconsistencies, you played Salas, then you went to Ladro, then you went to Salas, and you went to Ladro. Oh, man. Ladro. But you were, like, the only one doing it Yeah. back then. Like, mm. everybody was still just playing the one character. Now it's, like, the entire party changes in, in the next month, and it's like, what is going on? So I went down, and I just wrote down why everybody oh. why everybody left. Oh, okay. So And I was just trying to figure it out, and I was yeah. talking to them. and There's analytics and stuff. Yeah, and we kind of came to a conclusion, but I want to bring up something first before I get to the conclusion that I came up to, which was... That is only one study done, so the conclusion is r- Well, I'm trying to find it with myself, not just yeah, in general. Yeah, of course. Like, That's... what's going on with my games that I could fix to make people not want to leave so all the time? So the conclusion he's about to explain... Is his own. It's my own, (laughs) okay? It doesn't have to do with your game. Uh, Whatever. Um, They know that. So, uh, first of all, my favorite way a character could ever leave a game is... is fucking dying by a rock. Might be that, no. No, but literally all of your characters in Waterdeep and Strahd. 
It was absolutely perfect. Oh, made you. made perfect sense, and I really liked it. Which is why I didn't even count those characters. I was like, no, that mm. doesn't that doesn't annoy me because first of all, Minecraft had a legitimate reason as to why he left. Mm. And what I liked about it, which I'm going to get into my conclusion, a little <laughs> bit of a spoiler here. You didn't really want to play another character after him. You were mm. like, I don't know who I'm going to play. Yeah. And then like next day, you're like, okay, I came up with a character. And then Chibis died, and you're like, okay, I came up with another character. Yeah, Minecraft then, died because of a mistake. Yeah, and then um, and then Tallman left for a really good reason. Yeah. Like the, I, I thought it would have been more out of character if he stayed. Yeah, of course, <laughs> like no, it would have been like, why? Him. Wait, why is he staying? You yeah. know. And so it was cool that he left. It made sense, and I was like, I like that a lot. That made a lot of sense. And that was cool. That dude suffered a lot in that yeah. game. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I was just thinking uh, uh, Yaga too, just a little bit, but I added him to my thing because it had to do with Salt Marsh and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I was going through and I was coming up with all the reasons as to why people did some. it. And the number one conclusion I came to from uh, Turk and Fee and... and Are you going to say personality conflicts? It's not personality conflicts. It's character choices. That's a a really broad... Yeah. Can you rephrase that, I guess? Don't worry. I'm going to get into it. We're going to dive into it. That's (laughs) step one. Character choices was the number one way people left the party. what is character choices? Well, that's not... Okay, so that's not supposed to be like a statement. That's the factual reason why they left. Like no. they left because so character choices are like yeah. my character saw this happen over here, um, and we're at this point in the story. They would leave to go pursue that thing. Oh. They are oh. willingly leaving the party to go do a different thing because that's what their character would do. So selfishness to some extent. Kind of. Yeah. They aren't favoring the party. So I went to Colton and I was I was kind of just like meh, 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 on him about meh, it meh, meh. because I was like, look, you did this. Um, so hey, you, the, little, you little bitch. What you, little you, little fucking, better, you, you, keep li- you keep leaving my D&D games, you little bitch. You made a character. You can't just have him leave. You can't just leave like that. How dare you? They got to play the game. They gotta, I'm going to kill you. What, what happened to being a team? I thought we were here as a party. A party's supposed to be happy with balloons and confetti. And you're, you're <laughs> leaving the party early without even taking a picture. You didn't say bye to grandma. You just left. It's not okay. Give me a little kiss before you leave. Okay, so... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one of the examples I kept pointing to was Zephyr, Logan, uh, Colton's first character, who willingly kind of left the party. In to, Sunder. In just Sunder. overall first character? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's his first character, and he left, and he's playing a new guy now. He's only on his second character <laughs> only. Anyways. Oh, uh, keyword art. I have another topic. Later. Okay, I will. Um, so Zephyr left, and Zephyr left because the story kind of called for it. And so mm-hmm. what had happened was is that Olivia, a lot of time travel shenanigans. I will simplify it as much as I can. Spoilers, obviously. Um, in... Uh, so uh, Olivier has gone to Recorded the past. That burp. I'm sorry. Nice, dude. Olivier, Olivia's character, has gone yeah. to the past, killed her tyrannical mother before she could do anything tyrannical, and uh, yeah. then the party is going to be set back to their normal I time. I love that. Just season one, you were like, time travel. I can handle that. It was season two. Oh. Season one was. Yeah, it was season two. So <laughs> <laughs> I never okay. went back to it. Anyways, it's uh, tough. so. The party is going to go back to their normal time, okay? It's the fucking Avengers, you know, after they get all the stones, are going back. They come back, and Zephyr is not with them, along with Olivier. He stayed in the past to live with her, and it made a lot of sense. And I'll I'll, I'll get to the good Mm -hmm. credit on that part. One... He was a he was a paladin. He first of all he was a Goliath orphan. His 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 family abandoned him. He wasn't and uh, he grew up in an orphanage. Was drafted into the war. Died. Zeriel brought him back to life and said, "You're mine now." Mm-hmm. Then he Zeriel was like, "You're not worthy anymore." Killed him about halfway through season yeah. one, and then no, he joined that. up a new pact with uh, with Cadis, like which the, was another angel, a, a not fallen angel, a not fallen angel, just an angel. Yeah. Then he became like a good paladin, but still he was under the the like you do what I say kind of thing. And then he did all this freaking stuff. He became like a warlock too until uh, eventually, um, basically Colton and I talked about it. I was like, Zephyr never had any choices in his life. He kind of just was always told what to do. Yeah. And this is the first time he gets a choice and he wants to help his friend, which is Olivier. So yeah. he does it. He abandons all of his oaths, becomes like a fighter after that and just does that thing instead, which I was like, that's a really cool end to the character. Yeah. And then I was just like, and then we were talking about it, and I was like, but you left still, and you played a new character. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, uh, I, was, I just basically asked him, um, what if, uh, oh, God, I got to backtrack now. I really talk in circles a lot. Okay, so that's established. Mm-hmm. So I was talking to Megan and Colton about, uh, Spencer and Colton about what to do about um, 
the the uh, the the what characters leaving. Yeah. So uh, okay. I had already gotten some messages from other characters now that are like, "Hey, I might leave and play a different character," and I'm just like, <sighs> "Just cause." Yeah, and I just have to figure it out. And so they're just like, uh, "Don't do they? Do they put it on you?" Um, well, I want to know. Yeah, of course, but it's like with um, like if I didn't want to play Syndrix anymore, yeah. I'd tell you. Yeah, but uh, with a lot of my characters, generally, I like experimenting, so I like trying new characters. And if I don't enjoy playing someone like Yago is and was extremely difficult because I experimented with his like spell list. So yeah. he's not effective in combat at all. He had like no hit points and he was really just for shits and giggles and mm -hmm. he didn't fit into the party very well. There was a lot of kind of like, yeah, that guy, the gnome wizard, like he perfectly fit that generic kind yeah. of thing. So I was like, you know what? I can't do this. So I need to think of like a good reason for him to leave. Yeah. So, like, I didn't proc it. I wasn't like, okay, this game, I am done. I was looking kind of for literary opportunities. Yeah, it makes so sense. when he died on the battlefield, I'm like, he's a kid. Of course he didn't. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, so. Uh, spoilers, but I mean, like, I, I, I do that. Where, like, mm -hmm. I try to, um, is it is it going to be spoilers? It might be. They know already it's spoilers. Yeah. It's time fine. gets wibbly and wobbly when you're st streaming and Sorry, recording. Sorry, guys, we already played that game. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but uh, I, I like trying new characters. So okay, I, yeah, I try not to sense. be lazy, and I try not to force it on you to R take my character out of the game. Yeah, I I, I appreciate that. So that's what I was. Well, there's about another this. half to it, yeah, and basically the other half that that frustrates me with it is that now I need to come up with story as to why this character is here. Now it was easy. Your character is oh, invested. Yeah. Your character is into the story. I do a lot of work in my games oh. to get them in and caring about the story. And now you're going to just get rid of all that, bring somebody else in. And now I have to go, okay, now I have to get this random dude to care about everything. And again. you have to like put all of any daggers that they write into the game. Exactly. Or they just come to you with a random character idea that has nothing to do with your game. And you're yeah. like, how the fuck do I put this anywhere? Right. Yeah. And, you know, that even it's, happened it's with, with Yaga. Um, yeah. Yaga left, and then Cyrus came in. I'm like, okay, I need to come up with a way to get Cyrus to care about stuff. And that's fine. It's okay. It's like there's, but no matter what, there's always going to be something difficult for me, at least, to be like, oh, God, I got to I gotta do something about this character. I can't just let them just, well, I'm here now. And it's like, okay, we don't care about you, you know, kind of thing. Mm. Otherwise, they're just really not going to have fun, and that would suck. But regardless, I was talking to them about it, and they were like, just don't let them leave. Give them really mm. good motivation to stay with the party. That's don't bring up the story opportunity to let them do it. That's and so also stressful for you. It's, it, it's right. equally tough, but on a different. But angle. I would much rather do that. Yeah, I'd say than that's have fair. them leave. Because then you have to write, rewrite the whole story. Like I'm sitting here going, okay, I know everything about this character, all of their little abilities, all of their stuff, all of their characters and the backstory. Mm. They're gone. Here's a new guy, and it's yeah. like. Now I have to learn this guy, and I have to learn all their stuff, and I have to do that. And when is that guy going to leave? You know, like as the DM, you keep a lot of secrets, so I'm sure you have like conclusions to a lot of like story arcs and questions yeah. for these characters. And then when the player is not enthusiastic enough to even try and reach those, I'd exactly. imagine it's very difficult. So I told Colton, I was like, "So what if I had just made Zephyr stay with the party? Mm. I didn't let you leave." And he was, and you know, he was just like, "I don't know. He probably just would have stayed with him." And I was like, "But that would have been kind of a crappy end to the character, don't a you think?" Bit, yeah. yeah. So, um. The conclusion I kind of came to was uh, characters are wanting to leave a lot because they uh, players are wanting to leave because a they don't want to stay with the party and b mm. in the back of their head I feel like a lot of players just want to play new characters yeah and it's like how the hell do I alleviate this <laughs> because it's gotten to the point where I, it, it's happening so much and it is so annoying. And it, mm. at this point I'm just like, okay, all right, well, nobody dies anymore. <laughs> I, I would say there's, there's a certain point when there's something that irritates you that you want to remedy Yeah, is you have to take a step back and realize, am I overreacting to this or yeah. is it something that actually needs to be remedied? Yeah. And I'd say that for people who just want to try new characters, you should keep an open mind and okay. try and keep your story as malleable as possible. Like, it's been really difficult in Tesseract with Syndrix, mm -hmm. believe it or not, because I <laughs> explained to you how Dragonborn work in my world. Yeah. And all the descriptions you give are based on, like, d d is Dragonborn from the game? Well, I don't know. So, yeah, so <laughs> what, what I've had to do is I have to write up a specific scenario for the circumstances of your birth and raising. Okay. So I... 
I do have your parents and stuff, and they're, right. they're part of the overarching so story. So that's but. another part that I have to agree with on the fact that, like, it's frustrating for the dungeon master, mm -hmm. because, at least for me, because it's like, when there's a new character brought into the game, it's not like, you know, League of Legends, where you just queue up with a new guy and go. No. It's like, okay, you're going to play a new guy. Cool, we need to meet up. We need to talk about yeah. why you're here. I want to know everything about your character. I want to know, okay, for my world, this is where you would be. Okay, for this, you would be here. Okay, I need your character to hate devils. How are they going to do that? Okay, so let's me come up with a little story for that. Okay, cool. Like, all of this investment has to go into this character, and it's really annoying for that to just be gone and somebody just make somebody else on the pretense of, eh, I just want to. Or, mm, the story was calling for it. It's like, okay. Mm -hmm. And then Spencer was saying, like, I think we're just role playing our characters. Just everybody's role playing their characters too well. They're just like, they're. Um, I'd say for Salt Marsh, that's definitely. Yeah, true. It, yeah. For Salt Marsh, it's a really mixed bag it's, because it's like it's 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 a rough game because of all the character personality conflicts. Yeah, and we've all gotten, for the most part, better at role playing. So we know yeah. that like, a lot of the character conflicts are not personal, and we really try to kind of understand that as a group. So sometimes it can be difficult, but like. It's really cool to actually be able to, like, do a facade of fighting and arguing and, like, raging yeah. and attacking your friends yeah. because of the difficult circumstances you've been put into. Yeah, and and I, then to step back from the table and be like, that was fucking fun. That I, was so cool. I, I agree. Yeah. I think that's really awesome. I think it's really interesting. And it also, I think, it really shows how how mature you are in in terms like with your friends at least and how good of a relationship you have with them when you can sit there and just be like fuck you and yeah. you know all this shit and just nah, and then like three seconds later be like oh yeah that was cool like that one <laughs> good game you guys <laughs> that one part, that one part in tesseract where where um uh, that black knight tore up the letter and i was just like we were just like oh, sitting there yeah. like i hope you never <laughs> live to see the light of day and you were just like shame to you and i was like <laughs> ah! and then like 30 seconds later i was like Haha, <laughs> Clayton said a funny thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> it's so fun. It's it's really yeah. fun. Um, and you know that just happens sometimes. And mm. and, and Salt Marsh was such a mix ba mixed bag too because, and Colton was telling me about Vara and why why Vara. You know, spo more spoilers. Um, Vara left. Yeah, and um, um, she. Uh, I don't even know those spoilers. I didn't go back and watch that conversation. Oh yeah, well uh, Colton was just saying like Vara left just because uh, she just didn't agree with what everybody was doing, and, and so it's just it, like to be fair, a lot of people didn't agree with what she was. And doing. I was like, what if I had made you stay with the party? And I was like, mm -hmm. I kept bringing that up, like, okay, what if I had not let you leave? I I forced you to stay with the party and said like, okay, you care about who? Your family? All right, they are stuck with this mm -hmm. who who again. You have to stay with the party in order to do it. And, and Colton was just like. Vara oh. just really would have hated that because she didn't want to be around people that were just, you know, blowing up ships, you know, and she didn't want to be a part of that. And I was there, like, oh, okay. There's an angle I like about that and an angle I don't. Because, like, there's, you know, it's a really common thing that I think is a really important lesson that people need to learn just as a whole. And D&D &D can kind of fabricate a situation where you can discover that for yourself. Yeah. Where like the whole unlikely friends like uh Gimli and Legolas yeah they hated each other at the beginning they mm -hmm. didn't want anything to do with each other mm -hmm. and then they were forced by circumstance to work together repeatedly and continuously and they found traits about each other that were endearing and they're yeah. like you know I I hate my friends at certain points but th that doesn't make them not my friends it's like yeah. time heals wounds no matter how deep they are so you can you can fight with people and then you shouldn't leave for personality conflicts, I would say. God that, damn, that, dude. That's that, a huge issue. That scene at the end of Return of the King, every time, tear, it makes me tear up. That bit where they're just like, I never thought I'd fight alongside an yeah. elf. And he's like, how about alongside a friend? He's like, I, I can do yeah. that. I'm just like, oh! To like, have, this is the third time this month I've watched this movie. <laughs> to have that happen organically in a game or in real life is just like the coolest yeah, thing. Yeah, for real, for real. It, I, I agree. And, you know, that, that to me is like, if we were going to put that in D&D &D terms, is like two characters that don't get along but they both care about a similar thing. Yeah. So like Legolas and Gimli didn't get along, mm -hmm. but they both cared about saving Merry and Pippin. So yeah. they both saw how endearing they were mm -hmm. with one another to go do that. And they were like, oh, okay, maybe we're not so different put, after put all. Put aside your differences kind exactly. of thing. Exactly, yeah. I, I love that. And mm -hmm. I think there's a really good way to do that in role-playing games it, as well. That's true. But there is also the issue where like you have to raise the stakes as a DM in order to force those conflicts. Yes. But if people aren't like already, hello, He's oh, just purring yeah. right into the mic. Put the mic on him. He's not purring. Well, I thought on. I heard him purring. Well, you don't purr, bud. 
He just wants to push well, into he it. Does. Just <laughs> he does. Harder? <laughs> ah. Moose purrs all the time. And he screams like a little bitch. Yeah, he's loud. I get mad at him in my video. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck you, Moose, you loud ass bitch. <laughs> nice. Because he's playing while you're like doing the. Yep. And I couldn't cut it out, so I was like, meh. Uh, what were you saying? About what part? Oh, as a DM, if you raise pressure to force these conflict, like people mm -hmm. have to work together under very diff intense circumstances. Yeah. People who aren't aware of it being a game and, and like being a story that you're telling in addition to that, they can just, instead of directing their anger at other players and being, or other players and other characters and being like, I don't like what you're doing or I don't like how you're playing even, like there are two different angles. Yeah. But... If you raise the stakes and people aren't aware that you're doing it for that reason or they don't role play well enough, they take a step back. And then they're just like, you're being a dick yeah. and they're being a dick and I hate everything. Yeah. And because life is easy, I can just step away from the table and not learn anything. This is another thing I wanted to talk about, which okay. is a weird segue into it, sort of, which is just like, um, but I, I did want to go more on this. He back at the Berg. He, oh, no, don't That's eat that. Fr don't eat those fries, hey. buddy. When I said that, I meant the cat is back at the in the box of In and Out. Get so. out of there! Stop. Cool. All right, he walked away. Um, I'll spray him if he gets anywhere near it. Uh, yeah, so, okay. uh, I've been watching Guy Sklander's How to Be a Great GM, his videos, <laughs> and he has some How to Be a Great Player. It's a videos. Very handsome man. Uh, yeah, he's he's also got really really great videos. Go watch them. They're re they're really really helpful. All, All right. right. I'm, yeah. <laughs> oh Holy my God! Okay. That do you see how that didn't spray? Yeah. Oh my God! The cat destroyed the world. So yeah, uh, the cat ripped open a box of In and Out fries, and now it smells like In and Out because I didn't put them back. But the cat's gone, so hey, he guys. eats normal food. He so, steals normal food. So he's a piece of shit. Guy makes really great yeah. how to be a great player videos, and I was watching them. And um, one of the ideas he wait, wait a minute. He has a second channel for that, right? Nope, it's on how to be a great game master. What the fuck, guy? Dude, my favorite thing. That's not how that works. <laughs> You gotta do how to be a great GM, how to be a great player, how to be a great DM, and how to be a great person. <laughs> he starts a how new channel. How to be channel. a great person. How to be a great person. Hey, he could me. make that. He's a good person. Yeah, I'm sure he is. Um, and I love it because there are some people who you can just like read the faces of, and with like 80 percent accuracy, and be like, that is a good person. He he's uh, he's gay, and it's my favorite. Oh. It's my favorite thing ever because he's the great game master. And good on him. I told him that, and he was just like, <laughs> <laughs> "You told him." That? I was like, "It's uh, yeah." I just said that to him, and he was just like, "I, I guess oh, I um, that's just <laughs> how it." Yeah, yeah. OBS was just like, "Burp, burp." He just warped it. <clears throat> no, I get to talk to him a lot. I message yeah, him. Yeah, no, uh, you had a point though. How to be a great player? Oh yeah. Um, what did you say right before that? Uh, you were talking about players not, not and getting mad at the DM for uh, making the situation tough. Yes. Yes. Where was I going with that? He had made a video yeah, made a about video. players and there was one point he made where it was just like, oh, that was it. So like if you're like if your character is a terrible person. Yeah. Occasionally it can be alleviated so long as they do different things during different moments. Mm -hmm. So he was like, all right. So let's say your character is uh, an asshole. All right. During the adventuring, they're just an asshole. But then during downtime, they have to discover the fact that they are an asshole. So they mm -hmm. go like, so during, so during, you know, downtime and stuff, they come to the party and they're just like, I made everybody soup. I'm sorry for how I was acting, you know. Yeah. So like, he's like, if you're if you're playing a character that's just a dick all the time, it's okay so long as you alleviate it later, yeah. you know, kind of thing. So like what you were saying earlier, like you can't just sit there and play and just be like ee, ee, the yeah. entire time, like and that. Just mm. Get mad at everything. Like you have yeah. to, you have to wait for opportunities. You have to enjoy other people. And you have to realize that it's it's all it's all fabricated. Like yeah. we're all we're all here to have fun, and that's pretty much that lesson. And the fact that people still don't understand that is literally how Jacob and I earn our bread. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh my God! Literally, I just always tell people yeah. they, they they're it's expecting the <laughs> some like everybody is always expecting some like godly advice to be given. Like, how mm. do I DM like Matthew Mercer? And it's like, are you having fun? Then you did it. Like, that's it. It's a yeah. game. <laughs> the, the last video, the, the one that I just uploaded that we were talking about, it's, I think, the first video, aside from, like, the shitty Larry series, that isn't either educational or a parody of education. Mm -hmm. It was just fun. Yeah. And it was more entertaining, I would say. So. 
Um, that's there's something there. So uh, what the hell do I do about uh, my players constantly leaving because it's annoying? Do I need to just motivate them not to? I think that's the best thing I should try to do is try to give them reasons to stay with the party instead of leaving. What I would recommend in that specific situation is to try that and then okay. like be a bit more heavy-handed, be like, okay, things are getting tough and you can't just walk away from this situation because so much is at stake either for you, for places or people that you care about. And then if they get aggressive as players or as characters to that without trying to solve it, they just get overly emotional. Yeah, You have to pull back and you have to just accept that you can't take control and provide a fun game for them. Okay, and the other thing so, I wanna so know. So like, you have to kind of surrender a bit of the game to their enjoyment. Okay. The other thing I want to know is like... And wait for them to develop. Because it's happening so often, do you think do you think it's something that I am doing that is... You've been really self-conscious walking back, watching back a lot of videos. You brought that up. Because uh, if you watch, sometimes Jacob seems like a diva because he is a diva. I have it, really bad resting bitch face and also you, everything I say is really aggressive. You so, get really aggravated very easily because you stress about too much in the moment. The problem is, is that I'm not mad. No, yeah, it, it can come off like that. Like, I know that you're not. And I would say that for the most part, a lot of the party that you play with in Sunder knows you well enough to understand that. Well, that's good. I think because it's such a huge party, th this would be from my opinion. I'm not, it's not tr yep. tried and tested for me, but... It's such a huge party, so a lot of people feel like they're falling by the wayside. Maybe they feel a bit neglected, kind of like Chena, Tyler's character. Yeah. Yeah, like she did, where it's like, okay, my voice isn't being heard, so it's probably... Because they, as players, very likely feel the same way that you do about being a DM. They're like, am I playing this character right? Am I doing it? Is this all my fault? I don't want to do this if this That's is right. my fault. That's a good perspective. Yeah, so just... Hey, what's up, Spencer? Uh, six got into your fries. He knocked him over. He like, yeah. like he, bam, he popped opened it, it and like the clip opened and it turned and launched half of it. He got away with one fry. Those should be clean, but it's up to you. <laughs> why is he trying to eat my food? Because he's a fucking asshole. <laughs> he wants your food. That's why. <laughs> it's because you put it like on the table or on the counter instead of because you don't finish it. <laughs> yeah, no, he's a bandit. Yeah. Anyways, uh, you were saying oh. from the player's perspective. Yeah, just that they're stressing out just as much as you are about their characters. That's versus a really good game. perspective that yeah, I didn't is. think about. Yeah, it's yeah. a very healthy perspective to understand that like yep. no one is paying too heavily attention to paying attention to you too heavily. So like as the DM of Tesseract, uh, especially with that last game when I had three players, it was very tough to keep entertaining, especially when you guys started out doing something I didn't fully plan for. But once we kind of got into the kick of things, I was like, okay, now I can take control. But That game was fun. Yeah. No, but I stressed about it too much, and oh, you didn't okay. realize that I did. Yeah, no. Yeah. And uh, the same thing with, like, uh, playing uh, the character that I do now in Salt Marsh and a lot of the other characters that I have played is, like, I, I, I take a step back and I look at the table when I'm, like, I'm not doing anything. What can I do? And I just need to, like, I realize that sometimes – there are four other people here that are equally responsible for keeping the game as entertaining and like for playing their characters. It's not all on one person. Yeah. So it's spread around the table. So I think a lot of people think that it's all on them from whatever angle, what goal they're trying to reach is like, it's all on me to get there. Yeah. And then if there are things that are tough for like their character development, they're just like, I'm I'm gonna throw it away and scrap it. Yeah, they're just done, basically. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think I should just think of it from more of that perspective. Yeah. If a character is really not enjoying the character they're playing, I have no problem with them changing. Yeah, Yaga, like, Yaga it, was, was, I get I learned you, from Yaga. Yeah, yeah. You, you realize it just wasn't fun. And I mm. totally understand that. I've, I've had that happen before, yeah. um, where I was just playing characters that wasn't fun. Mm. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't wanna play this. But, you know, sometimes people are just like, oh, I you love my character. Cat. They're just, super fun, it's great. Yeah. But I'm gonna change. And it's like, why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, um, yeah, I got, uh, I got weird with Ket at one it was, point. It, 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 it was, it was kind of my fault because the way that I wrote the story is I, I had a lot I needed to explain, a lot of places I needed you guys to get, a lot of stories yeah. I wanted to tell. And the, the part of Ket's story that I was trying to tell and that it really turned out to be 
was not fun for Ket, which is very, very true. Like, yeah. he was being pushed around, kind of like Zephyr, in, you mentioned in your game, where he was not in control, yeah. and he felt like he wasn't making a difference, but that was part of the character arc. But as a player, it's still, it's, you're not responsible for your emotions, so like to feel like your character and to step back and feel that as a player is like, yeah. maybe... A, Maybe I'm just not having fun in this game. I but. definitely did not want to stop playing yeah. or stop playing Ket. It, it's it was a mountain. It, it was well. So I I brought this up so to I way. brought this up to Colton and um I had and I think it's a thing that I think a lot of players should try to do. Oh my god, I hate sounding like this. I I, I don't want to be the guy that's going. Oh um, uh, everybody should do this thing that I'm doing. I'm about to shit all over me in a minute about mm -hmm. how terrible of a player I am because that's the next thing I wanted to talk about. Okay. But um, this is another thing I want to say. Uh, in terms of this, what. I had one other. Oh, 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 oh. Art. Uh, yeah, art and. Uh, well, we'll have time. Cover your mic. We're just gonna leave this in. You want to mention your um, publish your cupcake award? Oh yeah. Oh, we okay. can talk about that cool. later. Yeah, because uh, th there's a bit of a lead-in I want to do with that because there's a part, a hand in it I want to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We I've can been, talk about I've that. been working on a project recently, and I'm really, really passionate about it. Cool, man. So uh, art, that, and then you were going to talk about how you're a shitty yeah, player like, and you hate like, yourself? Yeah, there's like two two things I want to okay. go on, and that's it. And then we can, you know, all the shit that <laughs> yeah. you want to talk about, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, so the one thing I, I was telling Colton when I was talking about this conversation, which was... Um, I was saying, like, okay, so one thing I had to do, and I feel like more people should do this. <laughs> Look at me. I'm doing the right thing. No, I don't know. Um, S Sindrix should not be going where he's going. Uh, not at all. If I was playing him to mm -hmm. AT, he would have stayed in, in Arkenberg. Yeah. He's been like, nope, go have fun with the Tesseract. That's not me. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. But I had to sit there and go, I have to get Sindrix to care about the Tesseract. Yeah. I, I have to. Otherwise, yeah, I'm not going to play him anymore. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just going to be like, mm, I'm done. Like, I like nope, playing there's him. A, there's this video on YouTube that I watched. It's called uh, Character Motivation. Nice, man. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> that, one, that one's more for Dungeon Masters. No, it's it's kind of the same angle, same angle where it's like they have to care about the story, but yeah. you, you also kind of need to give them that nudge. There's also make, uh, make an adventure, which is what I talk about this more. That's more or less yeah. what I meant. Yeah. Which is uh, the the one where it's just players going, mm, I'm going to play my guy and they're going to go over here. And it's like, no, 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 no. Be those, in the story. Those videos have melded into the same video for me. I haven't watched them in a They're long basically time. the same thing. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> the, I mean, the skit on, on the adventure one is way so fucking funny. Mm. Anyways, uh, so um, uh, yeah, Cindrix didn't care about the test tracks at all mm -hmm. he didn't care about the water people he didn't no, not his, really. when i first made him his whole thing was that he, he was a veteran of war mm. and he didn't want to deal with it anymore um and he that he was more of that above law he just didn't want conflict no yeah. matter what but he would obey the law to a t because he he figures that's there to make sure we people stay in control yeah meanwhile i worship the god of chaos so, <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> so. it's it's an interesting angle but like the god of law kind of has been attested to be responsible for chaos and entropy. Well, so. my thing is that he's complicated and it's yeah. not, it, you know, he's not just all law. And so I must follow the law and then I must do blah, 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 blah. Yeah. like that's not the type of person he, he, he is. He still knows what's right at the end of the day. Right. You know, like that's how people are. People are like, okay, well I do this, but then I act this way and then I believe yeah. in this. And it's he, like, that's how Cindric says. Every, everybody's a bit of a hypocrite. And I think to a minor extent, that's a good thing mm -hmm. because if you practice what you preach, you become an absolutist. Yeah, he's and, exactly. Yeah. And I don't want to make him an absolutist. Are the worst kind of people. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> yeah. Anyone who believes in absolutes and shuts their mind off to any shifting, it's dumb. You are negatively affecting the world with your life. Yes. If you don't open your mind. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> Wisdom score. Bump that shit up, you bitch. Um. But anyways, he. Um. So I had to get him to care about the tesseract and. Yeah. Uh, I was sitting there. I was like, I have to come up with some goddamn reason as to how he's going to stay because I I can't just I can't just leave. And I was mm. like, I feel like more players should do that. They should just be like, all right, well, my character wouldn't do this, but I need to come up with a reason as to because it would be dumb if I just left. Sometimes you have to do that. Yeah, and that's where I'm kind of frustrated. As I feel like a lot of my players are just like, nah, I'm gonna I'm just gonna leave. It's you. You and I have been to some extent in like acting and writing for a while. Yeah. You wrote that whole. I'm not gonna get into it in this podcast. We could totally bring it up later. But that huge um, Fallout oh, fiction. Oh, God. 
Fuck. Like, yeah. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> it was good. I liked it. it was yeah, I'm glad it was you past, think they past times. It was it was fun. <laughs> Um, it was fun. That's a good description. Yeah. <laughs> We've both done writing, so we kind of know, like, characters and story are not different. Mm-mm. Like, the story happens to the character, and the character still is guided by the story. So yeah. when you and I play characters, we realize, like, we have to do these actions, even if it's a bit out of character. Yes. And, of course, the best stories are ones where a character never has to break character. Exactly. So, like, but that's not possible in D anD. d It's too free for. What if Walter White just got treatment? Yeah. Well, that's what my character would do. It's like, well, okay, then there's no story. Yeah. So cool, no. you're done. Like, no, he doesn't get the treatment because that creates the story, mm. and that's interesting, and that creates the conflict. And of course, you're mad at him. You're like, you dumbass. Yeah. But it's like, that's but then you don't. But then drama, you don't yeah. get the rest of the show. You don't mm. get the drama. And it's like, I feel like some characters are just going. Well, why don't I just do that? There, I solved all the problems. And it's mm. like, well, well, that's not very fun. What if if Syndrix just stayed in Arkenberg? Yeah, that would have been really accurate to his character, but it wouldn't have been zero fun. Yeah, no. <laughs> so I mean, he's he's adapting as a character. Yeah. Even, even if he takes actions that he wouldn't normally and to some extent wouldn't realistically, it's yeah. still interesting and he's like new experiences for new he, characters. He cool. d- definitely learned last game. He's going to be kind of on a pacifism run because okay. he fucking fireballed a bunch of people and he is going to be really guilty about that because he was scared. Oh, yeah. And he just burned them oh. like relentlessly and was just, like he that gave into tough. that dragon sign a little bit. Yeah. It's like he has two sides of him. He has it, that law abiding sign and then he has that like yeah, uh, it was you know, all instant conquest. too. There was like because you guys aren't charisma based so it makes for a really interesting party and there's a lot of like hideous conflicts that has a, have arisen and will arise because you guys yeah. In, are not diplomats in Sindri- at all. In Sindrix's head, it was like a shopkeeper th- saw through our mm. seeming. The Black Knights of the Hollow saw us invisibly. We're fucked. Fireball. Yeah. Like, like there's no way. Mm. And now he's like, why did? You, why? Why? Why yeah. am I just killing people? You know, I could have tried, and he didn't try. He just he just went into that instinct because yeah. I'm trying to play into the fact that he is kind of like a red dragon. Yeah. That he has that kind of like, you know, he like snarled when he burned the dude that that killed the dragon, and it's like. He hates that he delves into that side of him sometimes. But anyways. There's a um, reason that uh, great red dragons are extinct. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. I didn't even know that. I did that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, oh, but anyways, I wanted to oh, tell you okay, the, yeah. the motivation behind Cindrix now is that Perry was like, hey, uh, the Tesseract could be used to stop monsters. And I was like, mm. okay. Cindrix's uh, company in his backstory was killed by a m- giant monster. Mm-hmm. Let's just make it that there. He hates yeah. giant monsters. I'm willing to help as I, long as we can yeah, get rid of them. I would say yeah, probably that was a like a toned down angle of your character, but you realize that hey, there's a switch here I can turn up and it still makes sense. Mm-hmm. I'll just shift him slightly and then hope that like he can just learn from that and yep. become a bit of a different character. Exactly. Shift. I was gonna say um, just a bit of a lore for Tesseract. There yeah. are two types of dragons: the Draconum and the Dracodeus. Okay. Who are both. Uh, the Drakes or the Draco. It's a family of draconic lizard creatures. And uh, Draconum are like uh, English dragons. They're based entirely on the lore of English dragons. So they are... Wings and shit. Yeah, they they look just like dragons, like normally. And they like are chromatic. Some of them are uh, metallic, but they're still animalistic. Mm -hmm. And like they're malicious because they're lesser. They're... They are pretty much animals for the most part. Do they have like intelligence? Some of them, okay. uh, they've developed semblances. Okay. Some of them are barbaric. Some of them are a bit smarter, but they're nothing like legendary dragons in D anD. d Okay. And then the Dracodeus are the, the big snake guys. Uh, the, the ones, yeah. the one that we found. They are the like gold one. Gargantuan colossi who float through the sky, and they were designed by the god that you worship, the god of nature, to yep. be the top of every food chain that <laughs> will ever cycle through or exist. <laughs> That's, that's cool. Th- there's a bit of like a funny twist that uh, is explored. Yeah, the during, small small animals yeah, can kill them really easily. Mm-hmm. The, the food chain became a ring because that god is a dick. Um, so like like the the king of everything that could just destroy mm-hmm. any creature can be killed like by a cat. Yeah, yeah, like a house cat. Exactly. It's pretty dope. Um, but they they ruled for a long time because they have the ability to inherently change the world by casting a stronger form of the wish spell. So uh, they're able to do that. And a lot of the red dragons, the red Dracodeus, were extremely aggressive and militant. And they were greedy and destructive and reckless. And that's what caused their demise, is the moment that that shift happened, their empires fell immediately because they were too passionate about staying alive. Dang. And reckless. 
Dang. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, I like That's it. awesome. Um, so you want to get into why I'm a terrible player? No, I thought that's what you were, you were Oh, no, about. there's more. That was me being yeah. a good player. This is okay. me being a shitty player. Yeah. No, so, please, please So elaborate. Guy made a, a video about bad PCs um, and bla- ba- Ooh, bad player characters, you know? One of them, them bait clicks. Yeah. So I found out I'm one of them. <laughs> Well, I'm sure a lot of people are. No, they're not. I oh. just watched it. And I was like, fuck, this is just me. Damn. Damn. Uh, well, if content's relatable, then... It's... Uh, I, where's my I'm where's getting my too phone? abstract. Where's my phone? It's uh, over... Hey, Siri. It's over there. Come here. <laughs> what if she, like, just, like, started walking? <laughs> like little robo legs. Like Spencer, can you have me on my phone? Metal spider Spencer. legs like in Transformers. I, why did I say that into the mic like she could hear me? Spencer, can you give me my phone, please? I'm playing Fire Emblem. Well, can you stop? You're playing what? Fire Emblem. I was trying to get you in the mic. Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem. Playing the new Fire Emblem. The new Fire Emblem. They got a new one? Yeah, they got a new one. It's on the Switch, yeah. It's called Three Houses. What's the new emblem? Is it still fire? Yeah, it's still fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing. <laughs> no. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> About uh, that game. Yeah, um, just, okay, I, so no, it's really anime, and it's like you build a party of characters, and you learn their development and stuff like that. Yes. So, uh, uh, yep, friendship, the anime game. So I game. found out. So guy lists a bunch of characters. Uh, he has a good, a neutral, and a bad. Um, and some of the neutral ones I was relating to other of my players, and some of the good ones oh. I was definitely relating to some of my players. And then there was one. It was four ways your character is bad. And one of them is called an, a hedonist. Hedonist. A, hedonist, sorry. I know hedonist. what a hedonist is. It's uh, instant gratification. Hedonism self, yeah. is, yeah, self-indulgence. It's self-indulgence, instant, gra- and he turns, and players, it's, yeah. the, it's the person who just does shit just for the ca- it's cause the of it. It's the instigator. Uh, it's the, it's the, the rogue who steals from the party. Yeah, no, that's, it's, it's a different take on the instigator. It's someone who just acts to get the game going. It's kind of like a troll. Yeah. But for their own pleasure. But he goes even further to kind of like mediate it to yeah. like a lot of different types of players. Mm-hmm. And it's I totally do this, which is just like I'm going to I'm going to do shit just to make shit happen. And I don't care about the consequences. You, I'm going to call the king a dick mm-hmm. just just for fun, just to see what happens. Just because the results from a good game, a reasonable game will be negative for yeah. actions like that. Yeah. But. If there weren't any hedonists or instigators or people who just make shit happen, then you don't have a game. You need drama from your characters and like. So one yeah. of the good player archetypes that I wish I kind of was that mm. he talks about is this one called an adventurer. And the adventurer okay. he says is the DM's idle player. This is the person who wants to go explore, the person who wants cares to see, see everything and, and cares about yeah. the story and just loves everything and takes it all in and tries to you know and just and just does all of it, just experiences. That's called it. your significant other. Is that her? Uh, just in, are you talking in, literally? In general, a person who cares about what you are. Oh passionate yeah, about. basically, yeah, yeah I- exactly. Um, funny enough, though, on the uh, the first two on the good players is totally is totally uh, Spencer, which is um, it's uh, one person. The big that, gay. Yeah, the big gay. <laughs> the big gay. Um, <laughs> no, one of them is is caring, and the other one is uh, the um, and sharing. Caring and sharing. You know the My Little Pony traits. Yeah. Fucking what are they? Friendship. That's it. Yeah. That's the only um, one. I, know. I forget <laughs> where are they? They're. Uh, I can't remember, but they. Uh, you should watch them. They're really good. But um, I really need to get out of the idea that I am a, a hedonist hedonist player. Um, because it's not very good hmm. and I need to really it not can be very bad. Yeah. And I feel, I kind of did it last game. I just fireballed those black knights just cause, cause I was like, fuck them. I don't want them to die. And it's like, why am I doing this? <laughs> it's like, there's going to be constant. I did that thing with Clayton. It was like firestorm. And I was like trying to role play. I was that, like, that was so yeah. fucking stupid. It was like, really why did dumb. I do that? It, cause you were like, you're kind of in a passionate setting and you were being challenged from your perspective. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Well, because I was, I, you know, Don't I was just trying to role bitch. play yeah. into the, into the Syndrix is not a perfect person. Mm. He has his kind of like ideologies of, He's I am, I am way too passionate. Yeah, exactly. Points. So, you know, cares too much. What do I do about that? Dr. Phil Logan? <laughs> uh, fuck. I don't know. I mean, I don't have a huge problem with it. I really like my video, my video's the perspective where it's like, I, I wouldn't say you are good or bad. You're just an archetype. 
and you have good scenarios and you have bad scenarios and mm-hmm. you have indulgences and you have weaknesses. So it's like, okay, I, I have to work around them and you kind of have to learn to be more aware of them and then just develop on your own. Yeah. <laughs> you I think one of the best ways I, I could probably go about it is, is thinking more about the party. I know I didn't do that a lot with yeah. Ket. Because Cat was very yeah. hedonist a lot. Yeah. He was just kind of just doing... The, your just characters are t- way too passionate about the moment that they're in. Yeah, so that's another one of his archetypes, mm-hmm. his neutral one. It's called the soul. And the mm-hmm. soul just cares about what's happening right now. What are we doing? Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter. But what's happening right now, it's so great. And I'm going to think about everything that we can do in mm-hmm. this one moment. And it's like, well, okay, what's good? It, his neutral ones are like good and bad. Like that can be good, but it can yeah. also kind of be destructive sometimes. But I think... I, I think yeah. the, the big part is that I'm just being selfish. I'm thinking, like, what can I do? What am I going to do about this game? What would be fun for me when I'm like, why don't I think about everybody else? Like, why am I not mm. doing that? I'm just I'm thinking about my fun. I need to think about everybody else's fun yeah. as well. I do They're, that as a dungeon master. As a dungeon master, I'm worrying about everybody. As soon as I become a player, I'm like, it's all me. That's one of those issues where it's it's not something you just be enlightened about. It's it's a long journey to fix what's wrong with that like there's a lot of stuff you have to learn it's probably not gonna be fun to learn that's why i'm announcing today that i'm starting my 365 day journey on being a better player guys you can donate at and when he's done he's go oh oh you can donate at uh, jacob has a small penis dot gov <laughs> and, nice. w- and when he's done He's going to write an autobiography about how I became a good player and how you can learn from me who was once as stupid as you are because you're stupid. This is the title. That's the, this title. Is the, bo- the That's full the title. title. Yeah. yeah, we're still working on it. Um, it has yeah. a finger on the middle mm-hmm. of it, like like you, just yeah. to feel like you're being pointed at. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's and how you can be like me because I'm better than you and I've learned by, <laughs> by nice. Jacob. So you wanted to talk about art? Yeah. Um, so I have a not sponsor. Okay. Uh, it, it's more like two artists shouting each other out and doing a bit of work, just kind of either for publicity or for stuff. Uh, this dude reached out to me. I don't know the name yet, and I'll, I'll mention it later in a video because I in, like swamped. I have one more mm-hmm. Grim Hollow, and then I have vacation to repair my body and mind, and then come right back at it. Nice. Um, but he does like really cool uh, sprite minis. Mm. So like it's a little website that has a bunch of little really really well drawn sprites and um you can like pay for some of the premium ones on his patron but he reached out and said hey if you shout out this website it's all free for like a huge chunk of them Mm -hmm. and you can just i think you probably like print them out i haven't done a bunch of research because i'm still finishing current projects but he offered to do a bunch of uh, players or npcs Ooh. In Tesseract, if, Ooh, if I already gave him a shout-out. That's so I'm like, awesome. Because yeah. his art style is really cool. And that's like, cool. Yeah, he did some really cool, like, night sprite art, so I want to see some of the major antagonists and then see if I can get him to do art for um, pretty much some of the major characters that haven't been... All he wants is a shout-out. Just to bring up his website. Uh, it's, yeah. Okay, cool. I'm going to work on it further, but it's... You never get the artist that wants exposure. <laughs> What? There's that, always that thing. The artist is just oh. like, like, don't pay me in money, not exposure. And then you get an artist that's just like, exposure is fine. I, yeah, I think it's <laughs> it's if they really appreciate what I've done, it's like, I, I, I want to so. give this to you because I really like what you do. But at the same time, I don't want it to be free. Yeah. But his website's free. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. And yeah. I cool. Assume he, hey, if it's his decision, then yeah. then whatever. Uh, I I'd imagine he wants traffic there, and then he wants people who do that traffic to pay for uh, the the kind of the memberships. Yeah. For the, he has like B people. The art is so cool because it, yeah, it's like five different variations. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll I'll show you later. Okay. I'll, I'll bring it up. But, but it, I want to see oh, it. Well, fine. What's his name? I can look it up while you're talking. Uh, <laughs> Bring something else up. Um, I have. Yeah, I love you too, but that's not what I want to talk about. I um actually found out that if you eat some drywall, you will gain the power to look directly at the sun without sneezing. What's up? Without sneezing. Yep. Eat some drywall, and you're good. Well, how much is how much do I have to eat? Just, just a little, just like a little, oh. just like like, just little. like a pinch or like a chunk, like a, like a slice of pizza size. How or? long do you want to be staring at the sun? 
Well, I don't know because I have never been able to do it without just <laughs> just do a little bit and try it. Just a little bit. Just a little bit and try it. Okay, yeah. it sounds nice. <laughs> yeah, it is retrograde minis. Retrograde minis. This is the intro minis. to the website. It looks very barren, but then you click, click to start. Click to start. Well, it's like a little game. Yeah. And then on the yeah. Oh wow. So go to show me your heart. Menu. Or no, what membership. The fuck? That's news. No, not membership. What's up? This is the podcast where we play on a phone. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait. Yeah. News? Well, no, hold on. I'll just... <laughs> fucking amateur. How do you do this? Hey, what, is th- what is this guy's darn phone? Hey, you don't know. Yeah. How, do, how do you do any of it? FAQ. Where is your art? Yeah. <laughs> just can, delinks can it. <laughs> free? Mostly. <laughs> oh, shit. Well... Uh, I want to see what... It, I saw one of them in there, and it looked where? pretty cool. Like, if you go down on membership, go down. There's, like, an orc guy. That's pretty yeah. dope. Well, gosh darn it. <laughs> Show me your art. Yeah, it's, it's really good. It's super dope. Go that's check re- it out. That's really awesome. Yeah. Um, so that, I thought that would be super cool. Yeah, that's, especially like some NPCs too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because the character I just introduced and I feel like uh, drawing Tenendex would be really good in his style with some of what I've seen. I'm going to kill him. Please do. He can never sit again. <laughs> He'll have a really awkward time going over to a chair and sitting down. He'll never be able to poop happily again now that you've cast Eldritch Blast once. <laughs> it's you, Cat. You gave me hemorrhoids. <laughs> Die! He can't ride a horse anymore. <laughs> oh, fuck. Just like Jesus Christ, what's wrong? You're gonna Jesus, he's gonna hit me. Indo as my savior. What is going on over there? <laughs> he's just ah, 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 ah. and then one of the guys in the back is like, "Do you think he's enjoying that?" Because <laughs> no, that one right there. Did you hear that? There was like, a, uh-huh. okay. Guys, guys, guys. Okay, okay, okay. We need to stop. We gotta stop. I gotta get off. He like gets off and he like waddles. <laughs> he does like the cowboy walk. Yeah. Well, he like squats. We don't do this because it's interesting. We do it because we all got hemorrhoids. <laughs> the black knights yeah. of the hemorrhoids. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob, did you know that the square dance was originally a hemorrhoid treatment? <laughs> Got the horses in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and then they can sit down. It's fun. So you're starting. You're not starting. You are conceptualizing a. Yeah, we're getting there. A uh, kind of like a publishing company. Yeah. Is it like the one with the penguins? Or what's the fucking. The penguins? The, the children's book with the golden edge that had like a bunch oh, of little Oh, I know exactly animals. what you're talking about. I have no idea the, what that's The penguin called. one is a different one, the but. Penguin boys. Penguin boys. That's it. Is it? Oh. Wait, how do you say that? Say it. What's the animal? Say it again. Penguin. Oh, you also say penguin. Yeah. I say well, penguin. 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 And then Colton. That's Colton says penguin. <laughs> at least nobody says penguin. Penguin. <laughs> Benedict Cumberpatch. In the. Have you seen that? No. Oh my God. Oh, he did a. Uh, he did like a BBC. Uh, uh, like like little documentary on on penguins, and mm. he can't pronounce penguin. He's like. Ping, ping one, pa- Pong one, Pong one. Like he Morgan just can't like, say it, and the they keep it in. Cross the Arctic, and, and he's like, like the the penguins, the, the, the penguin, the penguin. Yeah, like penguin. penguin. Like he can't say it, and it's so funny. Penguin. And they just left it. Like he's oh just, God. it's like penguins jumping in the water, and he's just like the penguins are f- going after fish. I, I'd <laughs> love it if, like, in the final professional project, there's like a a, a second take where he just stops. He's like. Fuck. It's 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 penguin. They told me before. 
the penguin. The penguin, and then <laughs> that just continues. The penguin. The penguin. The pentagon. The pentagon. <laughs> Who the fuck can say this word? <laughs> All right. What? Get Morgan Freeman in here Get to say Freeman. penguin and just run. I don't have time for this. I gotta go play Doctor Strange. I gotta go. I gotta Holmes. go play Donkey Kong Arctic Freeze for the Nintendo 3DS. <laughs> Isn't that one on the? I don't fucking the, know. Okay. I don't even know if that's right. What were we talking about? God damn it! Your oh, stupid ass do- publishing <laughs> company that's gonna fail. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Tell me how you really feel. Shit. Uh, I kind of went on board, but um, yeah, no, throw it out there. What's um, Tyler and I are kind of writing a book. Uh, just a book? That's, yeah. that's not a publishing company. That's a book. Well, we want to make blots of them. Blots. Hence the publishing company. Blots. I, I want blots as a, blots. Like a size. Got yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So We want to make a lot mm-hmm. of them. We're going to start out with an adventure book. I mean, we g- just got some conceptual ideas, and that might be something I do in the future. What's the general concept for this shit? Uh, it is... That was interesting. It wasn't terrible. We're really interested that in a... That was like a, a single note burp. <laughs> <laughs> Vibrato burp? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can do that. Uh, uh. <laughs> you want to hear a weird-ass noise? Yeah. Oh fuck, dude! dude that's like the, yeah, that would hurt uh, my ears. Uh, that's like the things in Metroid. I was like, how did you do that? Ah. Ah. Wait, 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 yeah, wait! There's a big ass bubble in my belly. You just sound like a pig. Yeah, that's what I used to do when yeah, I was a kid. My parents like a- were like, "Hey, make a piggy noise," and I'd and they'd be like, "Go," and I go. And they're like, "How? What the fuck? <laughs> you actually know what a pig sounds I'm like?" Just like, excuse me, but who, who the fuck ever said oink? Have you ever walked up to a pig and it was like, oink? No, <laughs> oink. that doesn't happen. Oink. Not, not even in, in Minecraft. They're like, that was perfect. <laughs> fuck. <Yeah. laughs> we always get back to Minecraft noises. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did. Uh, Nasus. Oh, <laughs> last time. Oh. And the, oh shit! You're right. God damn it! They were the villagers. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I have my patron game. Oh yeah. That, uh, the patrons, each one of them has because I've forced. It's based on Darkest Dungeon. Like that's kind of the model for it. Uh huh. So everyone has three characters that they come to the game with. Yep. And um, each time the game ends, they level up. Wait, hold on. There's a bunch of. No, it's just sitting in there. My throat's broken. <laughs> It'd just be funny if you were like... <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> what? One second. <laughs> Shit in my chair. <laughs> just a full um, But each of the characters that they introduced, because this is the first party I'm running through it, I'm doing like a level 1 to 20, and then the final arc, and then everybody fucking dies, and the game's over. Nice. Yeah. It's just... I, I have a nuke in the middle of the aisles and a hurricane is going to fly straight through <laughs> and trigger the nuke and it'll stop the hurricane. I was in San Francisco <laughs> getting my passport because I'm going to Finland and next week. So I'm, yeah, there's a thing, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah. It probably already happened by the time this is up, but anyways, beautiful. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited. It's going to be, dope, can I be the first to say, mm-hmm. fuck you. Yeah, yeah no continue. problem. Yeah, no problem. Um, I, I was getting my passport and I was in a line and I <laughs> saw that. the, the mm. Trump saying that he's going to nuke hurricanes. And mm-hmm. I don't know why it was so funny. And I was, just, <laughs> I messaged Logan and I was like, dude, this is so funny. And we were just like, That's like... talking about nuking just random natural disaster. Oh. <laughs> there's, um, a, there's an earthquake coming. Yeah. The nuke moment it. the Richter scale starts moving, they're just like, get the nukes, get the nukes. <laughs> nuke it. Yeah, nuke it. Just, Oh shit! You it's really hot no today. Nuke the sun. Mm, nuke the sun. <laughs> that thing's been there for too long anyway. It's nuking a hurricane. Is, <laughs> every podcast just th- their lifeblood is t- stupid political stuff. Just yeah. there's always a bit. But I just want to say it's exactly like <laughs> it's so in Despicable though. Me when they steal the moon. It's the <laughs> same thing. <laughs> it's exactly the same. That was what I said when I was watching you. I was just like, I was just like. The tide is in today. The tide's too long. Nuke the moon. Nuke the moon. <laughs> and I was like, it's been stealing meteors from us. We need those things. There's precious metal in there. Fuck the, the moon. Something really stupid, like a <laughs> tidal wave. Like, there's a tsunami coming. 
nuke the tsunami. <laughs> that is <laughs> makes a bigger no. That's tsunami. that's dead ass the same reasoning that you have with a hurricane. <laughs> is it disrupts all the flow and then you assume it dissipates, but. That's that's all the reasoning. That goes oh into my that. god! I don't even care about who said it. That's mm, just funny that's, as yeah, fuck. Just to so be funny. like, there's a hurricane coming. Nuke it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be in like a. It's like way worse. Like that's not gonna help. <laughs> that, that'd be in like a parody of uh, War of the Worlds or whatever. What's that alien movie with the big striders? War of the Worlds. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Something like that. Where was I going? Oh, oh anyways, uh, the yeah. Sunken Isles. Yeah, each of the characters have, um, like, th- there are different races that I didn't exactly account for. So mm-hmm. I started, like, okay, how can I fit these in the isles? And I have, like, maybe somewhere around 20 islands. And then one of them is, like, a tiny little archipelago that's a bunch of tiny islands that have, like, dinosaurs and re- shipwrecks on it. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking, like... <laughs> nice, man. Welcome to there Burp ASMR Podcast. Oh, my God. It was all the pig noises and the gulping. It's just, it was just it's gone there. now. My nice. stomach feels better. Good job. Um, so <laughs> there's like that little area. And then I was like, okay, what is a bunch of shit I can put on all these other islands? Because I'm at the point at fifth level when they when they hit fifth, there's like a huge event that causes the, the story builds up to fifth level. Okay. And then w- that's kind of like the intro. But there are options throughout. So it, it'd be really fun to play because there's a lot of replay value because each of their decisions affects, there's like a group of elders, five or six elders, and each of their decisions can positively or negatively affect their reputation for that elder. Okay. Uh, they just are, have completely pissed off the agriculture grandma. Uh-oh. She hates them. Why? They burn uh, everything? No. Uh, a cow got stolen by a shadow dog, and they ignored it. They went in the other direction. <laughs> And then uh, the, when they were talking about defenses for the, the little um, the village that's on the main island, mm-hmm. it's called Micah, and uh, they're like, okay, how do we get defenses? Um, the the younger girl who's in charge of like religious practices said, I think there's a shrine to a god out there that can help us bolster it. Maybe there's some kind of artifact there. Yeah. And she's the <laughs> agriculture grandma was like, well, there's a bush that literally grows plant dogs that like can use to be defensive around the perimeter because they just attack and defend themselves within the AOE. So they did the statue one. And to apologize for not doing the one that agriculture grandma suggested, they sent a letter to her. They didn't even go talk to her. This this is a small ass town too. They paid a kid and they wrote a name on the letter that wasn't even hers. It was a different elder. They forgot her name. (laughs) She's like, fuck these guys. Yeah. Like they just so <laughs> They had to they eventually had to go to the ocean. And I was like, if they go ask her for help, because she's an herbalist, she's going to curse them. <laughs> they will not be able to breathe the air. Oh no. <laughs> uh they, they didn't do that though, but that's funny. It, it it'd be interesting to have a like a published book with mechanics like that. Where yeah, that's, like huge tr- cause and effect tree. That's cool, but man. Once they hit fifth level, the world gets darker, mecha- like hard mode mechanics kick in, and it's been really fun, really interesting. That's cool. The barbarian has too much health. <laughs> but um That's you with every barbarian. Yeah. I fucking hate barbarians. I really do. <laughs> As a DM, I, you yeah, hate barbarians. I, I hate them. <laughs> um Hey, what's I up? Love, I love how simple it is, too. It's just like, they just have so much health. And they it's have like, so much health. Yeah. They do so much damage. They have m- the most health in the game. And they have an ability that when they're fighting, their health is doubled. Yep. So that's cool. So Angela in Sunder. Uh, what I was going to say is all these little areas, like I fleshed them out, and I think it'd be so fun to do like my own. Uh, it's literally just like a Tomb of Annihilation and then... Um, Salt Marsh. Oh, into that'd one. be cool. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. That's awesome. I have like my own gut grinder mechanics and then like a bunch of shit that's ramping up and a lot of places it can go. That's dope, man. Yeah. So I'd want to throw that book your way if you actually figured out how to make a publishing. Company. Totally. Yeah. That'd be awesome. I would love to do that. That'd yeah. be really fun. Big project, though. Good luck with it. Definitely. Thanks. Um, it's just going to fail. So, yeah, you know. Of course. Oh, I was going to say uh, Angela in Sunder plays mm. a, uh, a, a, a barbarian druid. So. No, you don't eat. Guess what? The rage lasts while you're yeah. in wild shape. Yes, it does. And she's the she's the barbarian that has resistance to all damage. So oh. effectively every combat, she has like eight thousand health. Is that path of the bear? 
Yeah. No, it's the it's totem warrior. Yeah, it's it's the bear one. Yeah. Uh, so she's a barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys want, do you guys want to kill yourself yet? Because I'm here. <laughs> now we have two. We have we have three bear memes. In this <laughs> Why are bears just fucking funny? <laughs> I don't think I can live in this world anymore with all the bears. <laughs> That's the end of the podcast.